Good evening. Hi. Hi. You all here? Hi. It's call and response. Hi. Um, my name is Wendy Wasserman. I'm the marketing team here um, at Politics and Prose. We couldn't be more delighted to have you here on a Friday night of a three-day weekend. So thank you for coming out. Um, and I hope you get Monday off to go play. Um, I am here to introduce tonight's program, but before I do that, I have a couple of housekeeping things I just need to ask you to do, which, of course, one of them is turn off your phones, because everyone's going to forget to do that, and then the phone's going to ring. It's going to be really annoying. Um, but you can take pictures. Um, the other thing that we are going to ask you is after um, Phoebe and Sarah have their chat um, and do some Q&A, we're going to ask you, as in all politics and prose events, to fold up your chairs and pull them to the side. And that is so uh, Sarah can have a signing line here. We're going to set up a signing line. And while we're doing that, and you've pulled away your chairs, you're going to rush the register and go buy the book and uh, bring it over to the signing line. So, uh, Sarah will be signing. She is probably not going to be doing personalizations um, just to keep the line moving, but she is happy to sign your book. Um, so the way that this is going to go tonight, as I said, Sarah and Phoebe are going to come out here. They're going to chat for about 35, 40 minutes. And then they're going to take your questions. Um, there's a mic right here. It's behind the white pillar. Trust me, it's there. Um, and we're going to ask that you ask your questions through the microphone for two reasons. First of all, so they can hear them. And also because we are both live streaming and recording tonight, we want to be able to capture your audio. Okay, so that's all the housekeeping thing, the phones, the buy the book. See, it says right here, buy the book. Um, the chairs, the Q&A. Okay, did all that. So tonight, I am delighted to welcome DC's own. Did you know Sarah was from DC? Yes, yes. I understand there's some high school people here. If, you're, if you went to school with Sarah, no? Okay, or you're hiding. Um, <laughs> um, with her new book, Foolish, which came out this week, um, you probably know Sarah from her smashing lip-synced uh, mockeries of Trump. Or maybe you are one of her 3.3 million social media followers. Or maybe you've seen her Netflix special or caught her on Jimmy Kimmel Live or The Tonight Show or Ellen or even on the comedy club circuit. I know she was doing a set here a couple weeks ago. Um, and if you were in New York uh, yesterday, you probably saw her dancing on stage with Amy Schumer. There was a whole twerk off situation going on. It was kind of fun. Um, so tonight, you will actually know Sarah as an author. Um, Foolish is, I have to say, many things. I finished it last night. It's a very vulnerable memoir, and I really appreciate that. It's a commentary on race and gender and fame and contemporary American society. And it's a reflection of growing up in DC. Um, it's funny, it's insightful, it's irreverent, and it's neurotic and charming and smart. Um, it's humane and forgiving, and most of all, it's a great read. Um, I have to say, I laughed, I cried, I felt all the things. Um, but what I really appreciated about this book was how Sarah took on the concept of imposter syndrome. And that's some serious stuff. This isn't Sarah lip syncing her way through. This is Sarah's real voice, and it's really good. Um, Sarah tonight is in conversation with another Laugh Out Loud gal. That's Phoebe Robinson. Phoebe is a woohoo! Phoebe is a stand-up comedian, a best-selling author, producer, actress, and publisher. She is the author of the essay collections "You Can't Touch My Hair," "Everything's Trash But It's Okay," and most recently, "Please Don't Sit on My Bed in Your Outside Clothes," which is pretty much good advice in general. And in 2020, she launched her own imprint, Tiny Reparation Books. She is also the co-creator and co-star of the podcast Two Dope Queens and the HBO series of the same. And tonight, I don't know, maybe she might be Sarah's dance partner. I don't know how that's going to go down. So with that, Sarah and Phoebe, take it away. Oh my gosh. Hello, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. So excited to see my cousin. Hey. <laughs> Front row. Yes. What's your cousin's name? Sophia. Hey, Sophia. <laughs> How's it oh, going? Oh, Melanie. Hi. Hi, <laughs> my Melanie. Other Are you also a cousin? Yeah. You okay, see? great. <laughs> Well, first, first of all, congratulations on oh, your book coming you. out. It's very exciting when you. you get to bring a book into the world. So first of all, how are you feeling? Um, I feel so excited to be here. I'm excited to see all your faces. And uh, hey, Elmas. 
How you doing? <laughs> Raise your hand if you know Sarah. Personally, yeah. Okay, <laughs> three, okay. Okay, just three. Okay. Um, All right. Okay, so I'm, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really scary to put out something like this. You know, my previous books were illustrated, mm -hmm. so, and I was really, you know, 100 Tricks to Appear Smart in Meetings. It was very, like, I, I, I it's, it's like every time I do something, I get a little bit more vulnerable, and this mm -hmm. is the most vulnerable that I've ever been, and the most words I've ever put together, and I <laughs> love writing, but I don't read a lot, so um, oh, oh, I don't. You're not supposed to. Admit I know, that. especially in a bookstore. I think I'm going to be hit by lightning or something. So how dare you? I know, I know, I know. I'm like, I love writing, but sometimes I don't know if what I'm saying is actually legible to other people. You know what I mean? Because right. writing for me has been um, therapy. You know, I started journaling when I was 13. Um, so, and then, uh, you know, in my marriage, I was journaling. You know, I because I didn't have anyone to talk to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's fine. Don't all. She's fine. She got I'm out. I'm divorced she's now, fine. so it's okay. She's good. She's good. They're like, oh no. It's like, no, she's arrived. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's therapy for me, like just free writing, just, you know, um, stream of consciousness writing is like my favorite thing to do. So yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I adore you. I think you're great. I will say, she tried to come for me the other day on FaceTime being like, I don't understand the whole Bono thing. Like, why do you like you two? And she's in her book writing about how much she likes poison. And I'm like, you gonna judge my taste? That was 13 year old <laughs> me, okay? That was 13 year old me. Um, did you like Bono when you were 13? Uh, yeah, of oh, course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've grown out of my Brett Michaels <laughs> thing, okay? I'm over it now. If he was here right now, I'd still lose my mind. You but, would um, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's great. No, I really do. First of all, this book cover is stunning. You're Thank giving you. us cheekbones. You're giving us flawless skin. You're giving us Photoshop. No, you're giving us executive in Q4 and the earnings have gone up. Yes, I'm here have. for it. Yes. The expensive wealth, generational wealth is fantastic. Okay. So I really, <laughs> I really do want to talk a little bit more about the journaling thing just because yes. I've always tried to be a journaler and it's just never worked for me so like I don't know I just I'm always like I lived it so why do I need to write it down um because I just bore myself because I'm like I literally just went through the things so I just don't want to like write about it oh, okay um but like can you take me back to the very first time you journaled when you realized oh this is therapy for me this is additive to my life this is helping me get through um whatever I'm going through yeah I mean I think it was um I started with morning pages when I was like 32 and some of you are nodding and have heard of morning pages um and I was trying to be an actress again because I wanted to be an actress when I was little and then I quit my job at like age 30 and tried to do it again and um you know read the whole um Julia Cameron you know artist way thing and um started journaling and it, at that point, it was all about everything I ate and how big my thighs were. Like, I would measure my thighs every day. It was really, like, obsessive. Um, and I would talk about men. And, like, I wouldn't actually read any of that, but it would just, like, get it out. And I felt like I could put it away after that. You know, it just helped me let it go. It helped me let go of a lot of things. So I didn't, I, I don't, it's like I was kind of searching myself when I do it. So when you say you're re reliving it, I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm reliving it so much as analyzing it. I'm like, mm. this happened, how do I feel about it? Um, and then in my marriage, it was a lot of times like, I'd get up in the morning, I'd be like, what am I gonna do today? What's going wrong? What's going right? What, what, what am I doing with my life? Um, and um, I would, it, I follow a pattern, basically. The first half of my journal would be like, this is everything that's going wrong. And then um, right around the halfway point, I'd start to give myself a pep talk. And so I'd start to write, you can do this, you know, you've got this, you know, focus on the positive, like, you know, all of those kinds of things. And so um, somebody, somebody did uh, read my journal from when I was 13 and then my journal that I also put in here when I was 36 and I just left Google and I was regretting it and I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Um, 
and said that my writing style hasn't changed that much. So um, <laughs> that was heartening to hear. Um, that person's rude <laughs> and a hater. But I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, it's just like blah. It's just like getting it all out. It's like getting the gunk out, basically. No, I, I love it. I, I, I think what's so good about this book in so many ways is that it's very, I just want to get this out of the shot, but I think it's very, um, not only like relatable, but I think it, it touches on things that maybe people aren't always so open about, like especially you were talking about like, you just spent so much time being preoccupied with whoever you were dating and trying to make sure you're making them happy. And I think that's really truly such a thing that everyone is sort of ingrained in like, you have to make sure the other person is happy. Don't really focus as much on your dreams or whatever. You have to like sort of like, yeah. like conform yourself in order so this other person can be happy. And just sort of you reach a point where you're like, why am I doing this? Can you talk about the point where you reach, I don't want to do yeah. this anymore and I really want to focus on what I want, my dreams. Yeah, I th actually when you were talking that just hit me that I think the reason why I like journaling so much is that a lot of times when I'm with other people, I'm putting myself in their brain and I'm seeing myself through their eyes constantly. And I think when I write, that's the only time I really felt like I'm in my own brain. I'm not thinking about how people are seeing me at all. And so I think that's why it felt like an escape. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, I always, the real, getting, getting married was like the thing, you know, you had to get married. And so I've done it twice. Um, and, um, the first one was, um, I eloped with this guy, um, in my acting class to prove to my teacher that I was a badass. And, um, <laughs> there are a lot of red flags, um, that I'm totally ignored. Number one, acting class. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't do that. Um, uh, number two, loved Joel Osteen. Um, so that was not good as... Yeah. Listen, listen. <laughs> Life is a journey, journ, and a journ. no um, judgment here. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I think my second marriage, and I cannot believe I'm saying my second... I feel like Elizabeth Taylor when I say that. I don't know why. I'm like, my second marriage. Um, <laughs> my second husband. Um, <laughs> You know, I think I was trying to, I was so ashamed of the fact that I eloped crazily with this guy to prove that I was a wild child, um, that I wanted to do everything right in that second marriage, like marry the tech bro. Yeah, good job, Sarah, that was smart. Because um, tech bros, they're, yeah, okay. Um, but anyway, had the marriage next to the beach, you know, like did all the things, tried to, tried to get pregnant, like bought a place, like did, just wanted to check all the boxes. It was about checking boxes. It wasn't really about what do I want. And then even when after I got you know, divorced and started dating again, I was able to see myself more. And so you know, I realized, oh, when I'm with this person, my voice is a little bit higher. I'm, I'm bored, but I'm scared to say that I'm bored. I'm um, seeing everything from his perspective. I, I'm just, I immediately codependent. And I just, I hated that, you know? Mm. Because all of a sudden, the relationship was more important than me. For some reason, every time I was in a relationship, that was more important than who I was. Damn. Yeah, it's fucked up, dude. That's not, I wasn't saying damn in that way. I just, I think so many people are scared to sort of analyze their behavior and be like, okay, what am I learning from these patterns? So I love that you're like, okay, this is the thing that I don't want to do anymore. You remind me of um, uh, Julia Roberts in Runaway Bride. Remember when she oh like didn't God. know what kind of eggs she liked? And Richard Gere was like, what kind of eggs do you like? And she was like, I don't know. And you're like, calm down, Richard. Um, but <laughs> so what, <laughs> what have you learned about yourself post these relationships? And now that you're focusing on yourself, what have you learned about yourself that you really love? I love waking up by myself. Yes, I love, I love it that too. so much. So good. I love sleeping in the middle of the bed. <laughs> um, my ex-husband, he would just, he'd cuddle with me, but in a way that was like, try, he was trying to push me off the bed. Like, it was like, <laughs> are you trying to get closer to me or do you hate me and want me to like die? Um, and um, now I sleep in the middle of the bed. I actually, you know, this might be TMI, but I, um, I, I put on lingerie to go to sleep by myself. I love this. I just I just love like it's for me. You know yes. what I mean? I don't do it for anybody else obviously because no one else is there. But um yeah, and I um I love waking up by myself is just like freedom. Um I I don't know. I don't really I don't really like to like I remember 
being in relationships, deciding on dinner was like the worst thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, what do you want to eat? No, what do you want to eat? No, what do you want to yeah. eat? Like, that conversation killed me, and now I don't have to do that. Yeah. Except I have to do it in my head a little bit. I'm like, chicken fingers, tacos, <laughs> pizza. No, I'm going to do pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that's great. Okay, so let's – there's just so much I want to cover in this book, and we have so little time. But I – what really just made me go on was like you lip syncing and thinking that you were going to be this major pop star. It is so cute because I used to like lip sync to like Spice Girls in my bedroom all the time. And I was like, I'll be the sixth Spice. Like I was really like hoping that was going to be my dream. And so I just love that you are just like. I'm going to show all the like nerdiest sort of dorkiest parts of myself because we all like had that as a kid where we're like, we're going to hit the game winning shot or we're going to throw the game winning touchdown. And so with this book, I know you said you were like kind of nervous because this was like the most vulnerable you've been in a book. But what did you love about sharing those kind of stories in this book? Um, the, the thing about me that I didn't see until I started writing it was how seriously I took myself. Like, I really thought, I don't know, like, um, I did Shakespeare in high school, right? Um, and then when I was shooting a scene with Dame Helen Mirren, I go up to Dame Helen Mirren, and I'm like, we should do Shakespeare together. <laughs> To Academy Award winning actress Dame Helen Mirren because I did it in high school. You know what I mean? Like, I was really, and I, I didn't see that before. I mean, I, I cringed every time I thought about it, and now it's funny, thank God. But um, I just, I really was just like, I'm an actress. I'm Kate Winslet. I'm going to be a star. Even when I was 32 years old on the set of a Smirnoff commercial, which I wrote about in here, I was like, I'm going to be the best extra on this Smirnoff commercial that everyone's Ennis ever seen, you know? And I'm standing in this basement waiting for them to come pick me, and I'm like trying to be as like Smirnoffy as possible, you know? I don't even know what that means. I'm dressed like a hooker, like I don't know. And they would never pick me. They would never pick me because I was just always like, me, 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 trying so hard, constantly. And I just feel like that's what I learned. I want to stop trying. I'm sick of trying. I don't want to try anymore. I'm, go I'm leaving. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> I'm out of here. Mic drop. <laughs> um, why do you think you were such a try hard? Like, where do you think that that energy comes from? I don't know. I really wish I did know. I mean, I guess it's my parents' fault. Um, you know, I'll are they? I'll just go. blame them. They're not here. They're not here. Yeah. They're not going to read the book. No, so they're going to read it. No, they aren't. Why not? Because they won't. Okay. Trust me. Okay. I think they will. You don't know my parents. You don't know Jamaicans. Are they going to read the book? Never. 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 <laughs> Never. And I kept That's things funny. out of this book, out of respect for mm -hmm. people that aren't even going to read it. Why did I do that? Yeah. Why did I do that? Well, and then when you want to make like an extra cash grab, you could just do like a new extended edition and then you just, you know. Ooh, that's smart. Yeah. Now included all the shit yeah. I didn't say about my dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think I had a lot to prove, I guess. Mm. I don't know. I think I think a lot of t I think because I wanted to do this entertainment thing that my parents really were like, what are you talking about? Like how are you going to get a 401k with that? You know, um I think I was just like I got to prove that this is it and this is right. And so I guess I just yeah, I really just went for it all the time even if it was just the silliest thing. Okay, and they they get it now. They see all the like major success and milestones that you've had along the way, whether it's hosting Kimmel or everyone special on Netflix, all the followers, the books, like they, they have to understand my daughter is, is fucking kicking ass. Even if they don't say it to your face, yeah. they have to understand. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, uh, my mom told me once that, yeah, I think so. My mom told me that my dad was keeping like clippings of things of and stuff like that, but he never told me about that. Like my mom had to tell me secretly that he had this little <laughs> library that he was starting. You know, he never told me personally and I haven't seen it, so I don't know if it exists. No, it's true. I yeah. mean, I feel like my dad is like that too. He, he was like, oh, I watch everything you do. And I was like, well, we never talk about it. So I thought you just fucking hard pass on everything. So I think yeah. just sometimes parents just have their own, like they're so proud, but they like don't always like 
communicate that, but because it's so deep in their heart that they feel like, oh, that's enough. Yeah. Like, they're like, you don't have to know. You're like, do you understand why I'm doing this, dog? Yeah. But also, I think there's a little, like, of discomfort, too, because mm. I was kind of the golden child, you know? Like, mm. I was the youngest. I'm the wash belly. I have the wash bellies in the house. Youngest children in the house. Well, it's wash belly if you're Jamaican. Yeah. It's what you're called. And um, it's kind of a gross name, but <laughs> it's fine. Um, and, um, you know, I have two sisters with disabilities. And so I think it, even when they do give me attention, it's like I feel a little uncomfortable because I, I'm like give my sister's attention too, you know, it's not just about me. And so I think they feel a little uncomfortable with, you know, showering with me with attention because I've made them feel uncomfortable with it too. So I think there's just a lot of dynamics going on that I need to work out in therapy. Okay, great. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, I love that your path that you're on has sort of like you've just kind of done like lots of different things yeah. and it's taking you different places which yeah. i think is good because i think so often people think oh everything's supposed to happen by the time that you're 30 if it doesn't you fucked up or your dreams are never coming true and so what i love about you is that you like like for instance like lip syncing the donald trump thing like you weren't going to be like this is going to be like the thing that's going to take me to like another level you're just like this guy is a is an idiot yeah. I'm going to make fun of this stupid fucking thing he said. And then it became a thing. And so I, I'm curious as to how you feel about your journey and your path and just sort of finding your way. You mentioned the acting class. That acting teacher who was a fucking dick to you. I, she was just honest. No, no. Listen, you can be honest without trying to break someone's spirit. And she yeah. was, it felt, it just felt hateful what okay. she was well, saying to you. I used her real name, so I feel bad. Oh. Um. Well, <laughs> um. she was being a jerk. When I read it, I was like, uh uh, I don't like her. Um, she, she told me I would only ever play a teacher or a student or a student teacher. Yeah. Um, that last part's a joke. But anyway, <laughs> um, and that's why I had to elope with that guy to prove her wrong. So. That first marriage is her fault. It's all her <laughs> fault. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the moment I, I think I just wanted to be famous. And I feel bad saying that because I feel like fame as a goal is, is I don't know. It's kind of gross. I don't right. you know. I mean, what I mean, you know that now. But when you're younger, you don't know. Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. I remember when I was like six years old, I, I had been put to bed and I like, um, went downstairs after I, they thought I was asleep and I heard my parents talking about me and um, I loved it. Like I loved, he <laughs> I just, I think it was the first time I was like, ooh, people are talking about me. I'm going viral with my parents, you know? And I didn't want to talk to them about what they were saying. I just loved hearing it. I loved yeah. listening to what they were saying. And the only person I think they talked about more than me was Whitney Houston. And I think that's where <laughs> the singing came from. I think right. that's why I wanted to be Whitney Houston. And then when I couldn't sing, I transitioned to Whitney Houston and the bodyguard. And I wanted to be an actress. Um, and so, and then when that didn't work out, I would stand up comedian. <laughs> and then that one didn't work out, lip syncing. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> now I'm an author. <laughs> like, I literally just want attention, guys. I just want attention. That's all I want. That's all I've ever wanted. It and now I've gotten it. Are you, do you feel fulfilled? No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, never, <laughs> never. Um, okay, so let's. One of the things I really like in this book is when your your relationship with Jerry Seinfeld is is <laughs> is relate related to it's, your relationship with Bono. Let's be honest. Yes, it's but the same thing, it's right? So, it's, Isn't it? Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like with Jerry, like you were kind, like you guys How old were. Is Bono. Bono is 63. All right. Well. Yeah. Jerry's 69. Yeah. Bono was born May 10th. Just, I know lots of things about him. I met with an astrologist. I have a permanent astrologist. But another one, before my permanent astrologist, told me that in another life, Bono and I were together, and I gave her all of my fucking money. I was like, you're telling me what I want to hear. I Thank wanna, you. I want to talk to this woman. Yeah. I want to talk to her. <laughs> But I just love like just like the interactions between you guys. Sometimes they were great, sometimes they were awkward. And like I think people always get scared to meet someone 
who inspires them. They find brilliant. And so I just like in this book, like you're trying to like make him laugh and then like Tig Notaro will come over and like really make him laugh. You're like, fuck. But then like you got to work with him and he was so lovely and wonderful. So I really want you to talk a little bit about sort of your like re your relationship with Jerry. Yeah. I mean, I used to fall asleep to Seinfeld. When Seinfeld was on when I was in high school, I hated it because everybody was talking about it. And I was like, why are you, you know, I was I, things that were popular. I didn't like. Were you like that too? I get, yeah, yeah. I, get, I was like that about a lot of I things. was yeah, just yeah. kind of a snob. And so I was just like, oh, Seinfeld, it, gross. Um, and then when I was in my late 20s, I watched the episode where um, George pulls that golf ball out of his jacket, if you've seen it. And it's like, it was like brilliant. I was like, oh my God, this show is amazing. And so fell asleep to it for years. And when I started doing stand-up comedy, I just saw him as a sort of blueprint. You know what I mean? Like you do, you know, you do your open mics, you do a late night set, you get a TV show, you're a billionaire. You know what I'm like? That's that's the plan. You know? Um, but I never, in a million years, thought that I would actually meet him or anything. And so when I started doing the Trump lip syncs, he was the f one of the first people to um, share it. And like a dad, he was sh telling his kids, this is funny, you know? Um, which kids love to hear their dads tell them what's <laughs> funny. I mean, they love that. Um, and uh, so that was amazing. And then I auditioned for this movie, and I got the part. And um, I, I was at this luncheon, this outdoor luncheon, and I, I didn't think anybody was going to be there. And then it was like everybody was there. And um, I was at a table with Tignataro and I saw Jerry Seinfeld sitting like at a bench over there and I was terrified to meet him because I thought the second he met me he'd be like oh she's not in this movie we're not putting her in I literally thought he was gonna fire me immediately <laughs> um, and um, but then he like came right over and then of course I start doing a bit I start doing a stand-up comedy bit for him like in conversation which is just so mortifying it's just <laughs> awful I was, I was like, he, he came over and he was just like, you know, your videos are still funny. I watch them and they're still funny. And I was just like, well, dads love my videos. Like, that's what I said. And I was like, Sarah, no, stop it. You're doing a bit. Stop it. Stop it. Um, and I didn't know, I, I guess I didn't know how to transition from fan to colleague. You know what I mean? Because at that point, I was sort of like in the room. And that's the imposter syndrome of just like, I don't belong here. You know, why am I here? I need to prove that I belong here. And then you focus so much on doing that that you look like you don't belong there. You know what I mean? You kind of, it's like a self-fulfilling thing. Your own self-doubt gets in the way of you taking space and, and really being a part of this world that you've been invited into. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a roller coaster of me trying to figure, trying to figure out Jerry and then falling in love with him obviously so um, <laughs> yeah and do you feel like where where is your imposter syndrome these days um I realize <clears throat> I realize that I don't know I don't really understand I feel like I don't understand it anymore you know like it's it's a little confusing to me because um, a lot of a lot of times the self-doubt will make you not put yourself out there but I realized a lot of the thing that was making me not put myself out there was fear of losing, um, which is something that I think I kind of got from my dad. Like, my dad won't play Wordle. Like, my whole family plays Wordle. Everybody plays Wordle. He refuses to play, and I feel like it's because he's scared he won't get it. You know what I mean? And we're going to get it, and he's not going to get it. And that whole concept of just not putting yourself on the field because you're scared you're going to lose. Um, and I think that, for me, was I, I realize now I don't want to live my life like that. Because if you, if you stop yourself before you've even tried because you are scared to lose, you've already lost because you, you haven't even tried. So um, I just tell myself that all the time now. I'm just like, I have to try. Like, I, I have to put myself out there. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that's why the book is called Foolish, is because I want to be foolish. I want to make mistakes. Um, my, my father uh, was, is very um, terrified of mistakes. I mean, my mom is the one who wanted to come to this country. Like, he was like, you know, one wrong move, and we're going to be out on the street, you know? Um, very chill, very chill guy. Um, and so that fear that I think a lot of immigrants have when they come to this country, they're like, okay, one wrong move and it's over, is inside of me too, you know? And I, I kind of am trying to get rid of that because it's not true. 
It's not true. In fact, the more mistakes you make, the better, because then you get further in life, you get to know yourself better, and when you're on a movie set, the mistakes are the most interesting things you can do. So, and I kind of had to learn that. Yeah, like losing's kind of, it's kind of great. It's like not great, but you're also, I just feel like it always like sort of directs you where you ought to be going, and sometimes you just don't know that, because you're like, oh, I think I want this shiny thing over here, and the universe is like, no, come, 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 and it like sort of like helps you go somewhere else. So yeah. I, I, I really, I don't enjoy losing, but I think I've gotten to a place where I'm like, okay, someone's trying to help me out right now. You know the metaphor that's worked for me lately? Um, you, you ever watch The Bachelor? I was gonna say one from Jersey Shore. Okay, okay well I'll yours. start with The Bachelor, yes. okay. <laughs> I do watch The Bachelor. I'm also watching Golden Bachelor. Are you okay. I haven't seen last <laughs> night's episode. I have not seen it yet, I'm very excited. It's, oh my God, I cannot wait, okay, yes. Okay, so, so you know in the finale of The Bachelor when there's only two people left, yes. and they make the editing makes it look like one person's gonna win, but then it's usually like the other person, they always do a fake out. Now whenever I feel like I'm losing, I'm like, God's trying to fake me out. God's <laughs> trying to like make it look like I'm losing because they're about to show me something else, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, God loves a plot twist. He loves to surprise you. That's that's what he loves to do. He doesn't now sometimes like if I want to control a situation, I'll think about every single possible thing that can happen. And after years of doing that, I now realize if I've thought of it, that won't happen. All I'm doing is eliminating possibilities yeah. when I think of every because God is like, nope, we're not gonna. Ha that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. It's always something that I've never thought of before. Mm. And so I kind of I'm like. It's a surprise. It's going to be yeah. a surprise how this works out. It's going to work out, and it's going to be a surprise, and you just kind of have to love the surprise. I love that. Okay, that sounds better than my... <laughs> no, so I I watch, I watch. used to watch Jersey Shore. You can judge me. It's a garbage show. But the philosopher, Mike uh, Sarantino, he was saying... <laughs> He would say, a setback is a setup for a comeback. And I was, I love that. And I know it's horrific coming from him, but if you, if you did not know who it was attributed to and someone just told you that, you'd be like, yeah. Very true. That yeah, sounds yeah. good. Put but it now on that a I said it's from Mike yeah. from Jersey Shore, you're like, that's fucking garbage. I don't believe that. <laughs> but it's true. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so we've both um, guest hosted Jimmy Kimmel Live, which is the best. So he, what was it like for you? Because it was so, ex it was what, it was during COVID. Yeah, it was during COVID. I, yeah. was in a, I was in a mansion, there were two people, and there was just a cameraman and a sound guy and like a producer. It was very, um, I mean, it should have been fine because I performed for two people before like all the time. <laughs> so like I should have been like, yeah, this is my jam. But it was also they put my stand up set on a teleprompter and I've never read my stand up set before. I've usually mm -hmm. just done it out of my head. And so that was a little difficult. But then I watched David Spade the next night and he was literally talking to the two people. And I was yeah. like, I should have done that. I should have <laughs> just talked to the two people in the room. Um, no, you were great. There's but it no was should. it was I know there's no should. No but should. Um, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. I remember just getting a text in the middle of the night. and I was like, they want you to guest host Kimmel. And I was like, Oh my God, like I wanted a, a five minute set. All I wanted was a five minute set on late night and I've been trying for 10 years to get that and now they wanted me to guest host Kimmel. I mean, it was just like so many things happened like that all, all at once overnight and they were like, you know, if you're not ready now, maybe next year you can do it. And I was like, no, I know how viral success works. <laughs> I, better, I better take the chance when I can get it. So what is, what is it like when things sort of happen overnight? You've been working and working for years, doing the acting classes, doing stand-up. You know, you're work, you ha working a nine-to-five. You're like, no, I really want to pursue my passion. And then things really blow up. And then you're like working with Maya Rudolph and Natasha Leone, like all these things. So how do you sort of steady yourself when you're in the middle of just this tornado? Um, I, I kind of just... I was like a robot. I was kind of like just kind of going through, I was just trying to like, yes, I'll do that. That sounds good. I'll take this meeting. I'll do everything. Um, and looking back now, I feel like that 10 years that I've been working to try to get the things that I got in 2020, I feel like I've been working on all the wrong things. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, so I wasn't working on getting to know myself. I wasn't working on mm. figuring out who I was. And so when I got all of that stuff and they were like, who are you? I was like, Sarah Cooper, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever that means. Um, and when you get to that, 
the world of entertainment and um, people want to know what your voice is. Right, and right. it was really messed up because it was just like my voice, but also I was lip syncing someone else's voice. But it was just like all of this, like, who are you? It was tough to kind of figure that out. And I feel like I've kind of started to figure it out now. Um, but at that time when all of this attention was on me, I was just kind of frozen a little bit because I was like, this is great, but I don't know exactly what I want to say or who I am. Yeah. And what do you what do you feel like you want? You said you're starting to figure it out now. So what do you feel like you w- want to like what your voice is now? Well, I realized, you know, I love, you know, um, I mean, this this whole idea of a clueless boss is something that I love. I love the idea like Trump was a clueless boss. I worked for clueless bosses all my life. Um, and that kind of feeling of just I don't know, the numbers aren't adding up and uh you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I start sentences and I don't know where they're going to go. So I just kind of lean back and hope that someone cuts yeah, me off. Yeah, you, ever you do that? Let, you, you ever do that? Yeah, you let that peter out. And I was like, well, wait, where is she going? <laughs> don't leave. Stay here. No, um, I know you have to open it up for, for Q&A um, in a second. Um, before we do, oh, so when we do Q&A, please go to this microphone right here. Uh, Wendy's waving her hand. Um, and you know, make sure the questions don't be ignorant. Okay, like this is a this is a safe space, a fun space. It's her night, so let's have fun. Let's be cute about it. Okay, so before we open up to Q and A, I want to know what was um, what has been your favorite part of this book process? Because as someone who like like I love books, I like to smell books. I'm gonna smell this one. It's like my favorite thing to do when I buy books is I smell them. It's so fucking good. It's so fun. It's oh my god. It's like one of the hottest things ever. Um. But what's been like the most, because I know you were like, uh, when we were FaceTime, you're like, oh, this is like book coming out, it's kind of stressful and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, totally. But there has to be like so many moments like when you were writing this where you're like, oh, this is so funny or oh, I'm remembering this thing and like I take myself back to like 25 year old me and like that's so cool. So what was your favorite part of writing this book? Uh, gosh, I mean, there were so many parts. I mean, I think I think one of my favorite things was just seeing patterns that I that I've broken um, in my life. Um, But also it's it's dedicated to my siblings, George, Charmaine and Rachel. And there's three sections of the book. And these are things that I've just kind of noticed after I think looking at it afterward, you know, assimilation is very much like my brother because he joined the Navy and he got married and had two kids and bought a house and has a dog. Like he like really like followed all the rules and determination is about my love life and Charmaine has been sort of a representative to me of of like being as unique as possible and like wanting to be loved for what makes you different, not what makes you the same. And um, Rachel is, um, she, she's on the spectrum and so she has sort of taught me about um, being silly. And she's the first person that I sort of made laugh. She's only a year and a half older than me. And we were very close in age and that at a certain point she was taken out of my class. And so um, I've always related to people on this very intellectual level. I've always, you know, I've always been very like, you know, in uh, like trying to be as smart as possible. My first book was about how to appear smart. And I feel like I've come completely around 180 to being like, appearing smart is so boring and it's so, um, I don't know, it's not, it's not something to aspire to the way that I aspire to make Rachel laugh and be as silly and goofy and fun and just in the moment as Rachel is. And so that to me is that, that third section. And so seeing my siblings and how they've affected me and created me and, and really um, shaped who I am, that was kind of one of the coolest parts of it for me. I love that. That's so sweet. You, the way you write about your siblings is very, I was just like, oh, because I have an older brother and like, I'm so obsessed with him. So I, I totally get it. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so what's, what's, what's your name? David. David. Nice to meet you. Okay, go ahead. Ask your question. I think the whole audience would love to hear your parody of Trump. <laughs> okay. Um, can you do some for us? Sure. Um, Are you sure the whole audience? You want to yeah. speak for everybody? Okay, uh, okay, David. No, no, I would love to hear exactly just what you con- what that's, you. That's what. just such a dude to be like. I know what everybody <laughs> wants. I, 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 I. What do you want me to 
to do? Because I was lip syncing it, so I don't um, know. Like as um, uh, father of the vaccines, yeah, you know, something like that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> She all, you don't have to do it. No, I mean, like, I, so sometimes people are like, can you do the Trump? And I'm like, how? I, how do I? You need how, the audio. Or how about uh, you're killing it? What? I don't know. How, he I'm, he you're would killing? say that to people who were doing a good job, you know, oh. making lots of money for him. Oh, okay. I actually do say that. Yeah. yeah. One of the chapters is called I Heard You're Killing It. So, yeah. but yeah, I, yeah, I don't really, I don't do Trump anymore. So, yeah. But thank you oh. for your question. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, has uh, your home country changed much since you left it? Um, yeah, it's changed a lot. I hadn't been back in 15 years, and I just went back this past April, and it's changed a lot. Um, but it's so beautiful. I loved it so much. Yeah. The people have changed? The um, culture? Yeah. The, I mean, the culture has grown a little bit. Sophia probably can answer this better than I can. But, yeah, I mean, to me, it's just um, it's, it's just built up so much more than it was before. But... Um, it's still one of the most beautiful places, and we went to Negril, me and my sister and my mom, and um, my mom got a, um, I can't say this, never mind. <laughs> then again, she's never going to watch this, so it's fine. Yeah, what, what did she get? No, she'll, she'll hate me. Do but, you, um, you, she, you want to whisper it in my ear? Okay. okay. <laughs> she got crabs, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what she said. That's not what she said, okay. <laughs> What's your, what's your name? Hi, my name's Ebony. Y'all are amazing. Thank you, um, Ebony. Uh, thank you for existing. I appreciate it. I really like both of you a lot. I'm nervous. Um, thank you. I wouldn't have made it through Google without your book. I worked there, and I literally picked it up, and it like made it through my day. So thank you. Um, my question is, where are where should we be focusing our attention as we are exiting COVID to a degree and moving into this space of attack on human rights and civil rights. And um, you talked about how you found yourself and that was the question maybe you should have been asking along the way. What's the question we should be asking? Where should we be looking into ourselves in this time of social and political turmoil? Oh my gosh. Damn, Ebony. That is a, <laughs> Ebony, that's a do big you work question. for CBS Evening yeah. News? <laughs> Um, Go ahead, Sarah. That's a Have big fun. One. No, yeah. Well, in five words or less. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I would say uh, I would love for us to focus on um, what makes us feel good, not what makes us feel angry. Because I feel like people are like kind of addicted to feeling angry, and I say that as someone who got famous <laughs> off of things that made me angry. So it's like that's tough. But at this, but since in that three years, I've realized that where you focus your attention, um, it doesn't matter if you hate Trump. If you're still obsessed with him and you're still thinking about him all the time, he's still winning because he's still taking up space in your brain. So I feel like, yes, he's a threat, but also can we focus that energy on what makes us feel good, what we want to support, what we want to lift up, instead of focusing it on what we want to push down? So that's what I would say. Yes. I love that. Thank you, Thanks, Ebony. Thank Ebony. you for making me feel smart. I, that so was fun. Cute. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Okay, Dress. Hi. Hi. Yeah. What's your I'm, name? I'm Fiona. Fiona. Hi. And uh, I do know Sarah, but Phoebe, I feel like I know you too. So. Oh, hey, girl. Hey. I'm just going to pretend <laughs> like I do. <laughs> um, my question for both of you, but for Sarah also is, what was the turning point for you, like, when you knew you were going to, quote, unquote, put yourself out there? And you were going to say, I'm going to make content every day. I'm going to get on the interwebs. I'm going to start, you know, being silly or, or just doing whatever I feel like doing on the web. Because I know as a writer, like, you weren't doing it as much as yourself, just putting your work out there. But when did you decide, okay, I'm going to put my face. I'm actually going to start doing this. Yeah, I mean, um, I I started I started blogging when I was like 25 or something like that, um, which was just yesterday, um, and uh, 
then I think, you know, I always hid behind, you know, sort of this Cooper Review. The Cooper Review was sort of like this brand that I had, and I, I hid behind that. Really, it was the, the Trump videos was the first time that I was putting my face out there. And um, it was kind of cool because I didn't mind that people were stealing it because it was still my face, you know? So I, it still, like, spread, and it was great. Um, so I think... Probably after that happened and after I got to the place where I was just like, wait, I'm being asked who am I, but I don't know who I am. I think that's when I was like, oh, I kind of want to get more vulnerable and I want to tell more personal stories, um, especially with all the relationship experience that I have. I love talking about relationships. I love talking about, um, I love talking about evolving, you know, like through my writing, I feel like I've evolved by being able to see myself. Um, I talk about, you know, Google, Doc, Google Docs knew I was getting a divorce before I did. That was, that's the chapter because um, it was my journals that I read for the first time that helped me see that I was going in circles for eight years. And that's what helped me realize that I needed a divorce. Um, and so I love talking about how we can all see that voice in our head a little bit clearer and have more control over it so that we don't um, shut ourselves down. Um, I kind of, I'm, I was trying to make this sort of connection between like the authoritarian who is Trump, but this authoritarian who sort of lives in our head as well, who tells us we're not good enough and we're not smart enough and nothing we do will ever be right. And being able to see that voice and sort of control that voice so that we can overcome that voice and kind of speak as authentically as possible. So. Um, that's brilliant, is what I just said. Um, so <laughs> that yeah, was so yeah, good. It was really, really good. I, I kind of like, blacked out there for a second. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was so Fiona. good. Yeah, no one cares. This is your night. I don't need to. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, my cousin's gonna ask a question. Hey, cousin. <laughs> um, Melody. Oh, my name is Melanie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Um, I'm Sarah's cousin, and I've known her all my life. Yeah. I saw her in the Shakespeare play when yeah. she was in high school. Um, and I, I don't really have a question. I just want everybody to know how proud oh. we are oh, of thank Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. I really like. You know, I follow her on Instagram. You need to follow her if you don't. But she's been so vulnerable and just so real. Like, Sarah is what you get, right? Mm -hmm. Like, she's not putting on any airs. And I just i am so proud of her for being so brave and vulnerable and putting Jamaica on the map again. Right? <laughs> and just representing herself and on our family and Jamaicans so well. We're just so Thank proud. Thank you so much. Love I you. obviously have to give you a hug. I'm so much. That was so sweet. That was the best question I've ever gotten. That was a really good question. <laughs> I love that question. Does anybody <laughs> want to follow that question with their own question? I will. Uh, 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 oh, oh. Do Who's going to get there first? Who's going to get there first? Oh, do you want to go? Yes, no. So I'm Sophia. I'm her other cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know what you're going to do next. Oh, I love this question. Um, I don't know. I really don't. I... McDonald's. I think I'm going to get some McDonald's. Don't do it here. <laughs> it's so much better overseas. It's That's my McDonald's new thing. McDonald's is yes. overseas. Better. When I had it in London, I was like, this is real food. What? <laughs> it's so fucking good. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it here. Yeah. yeah. No, I am. Um, but also do it. Why am I telling you what to do? No. I, 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 I take that back. I, but, you know. I, yeah. No, I have, I really have no idea. Really no idea. I could, I could tell you something but it just wouldn't even be true so i'm not gonna not gonna front i'm Maybe not gonna a, do it a staycation a vacation after like you know touring this book around you might want to just have a, a moment yeah to i actually do want to go to london it's great and um, i love it babes i love yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> i do want to i and i would like to have sex again that would be fun yes but also it's have like, you tried it is it good it's yeah. fun I'm like, i haven't I, done like, it in so long that i just forgot what it's oh like no. so yeah it was May for me, and I'm like May for me too. Okay, yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I'm, I'm so like I'm good. I just don't even want to have to like talk to like you know you know where sex is the best. Guy you know like, where sex oh, yeah, is yeah, the best. Yeah. Where 
in your head, oh, it's the best. It's the best. It's best. You you the write best. the you write the fucking dialogue. Oh my god, for them. it's amazing. It's exactly yeah. what I want. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The men in my head, they do it right. You yes, know what I mean? They do. They do it right. Yes. Yeah. I love them all. I know they're all fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. We just got lost in our own yeah, little thing. Yeah, but really <laughs> someone had a question in David Bowie t-shirt, and then she went back. There we go. The question went almost completely out of my head. Wait, wait, wait. I, What's your name? Um, Chloe. Hi, oh, Chloe. hi, Chloe. Hi. It's so great to see you, um, both in person. I said that like I know you. Um, yeah. But you're both amazing. Um, I'm a big fan. I hate to bring it back to negative, but like this is, well, overall positive. You're just so vulnerable Wait, and can you get closer to the oh, mic yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. as a like anxious person um i'm anxious now because i like just came from the gym and wasn't planning on talking but i was like i love you guys so much we're um, proud of you for yes. talking that's good yes. that's amazing like, what did you do at the gym uh i was on the elliptical oh, nice <laughs> you did what the i was on the elliptical okay I was, like, yes i'll I just love come that. sit in the back not talk but then i was like they're great so no. i'm rambling but um but that's the thing i wanted to say thank you for first is is making rambling fun and also normalizing it. I think we all kind of forgot how to talk after the pandemic a little bit. Um, and a lot of kind of your journey kind of to me seems like, it, well, it obviously is very different than mine, but like I, the pandemic journey of like figuring out how to be a person and like how to not go over the top, you know, in terms of trying to please other people. I think like I've talked to a lot of my friends and um, it's something we've all kind of been through. So. Yeah, I'm excited to read your book. Everything you do is great. Um, my question. <laughs> this is so was. cute, Chloe. <laughs> I am so adorable. I'm so. How old are you, Chloe? I did. Wait, how how old are you? <laughs> Twenty twenty. Oh my god, twenty six! <laughs> Say that with your chest. I know. Like, That's I feel like great. you're probably like eighteen, but um, no, <laughs> no, you're delightful. Thank you. I yeah. love you both. Um, my question was, uh, like, when you are getting to a place where you you want to do something but you're afraid. I know you said you you have that thing you say to yourself, but have you found like there's anything that you've done that hasn't worked um, that you would say like not to do, or are there other things that you'd recommend to people? Because obviously, you know, I think as you can probably tell from this question, trying new things is, is yeah. always kind of a yeah. challenge. But I love that you're doing it. Yeah, I mean, um, drugs will make you think that you're doing a good job, but they, you aren't actually doing a good job. So I would say, don't, yeah. don't make that mistake. Yeah. I've done that. Um, <laughs> you'll feel like, oh, this is brilliant, but it's, it's actually not. Um, and um, I, it, may, it just made me think of when I first started trying to, to create mm -hmm. things online. I had this small Facebook group of just my friends and family, and I would share things with them first. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me so much because it was this group of people that I trusted that loved me, that would give me real feedback, and I knew they weren't out to get me. And so, like, mm -hmm. and even just putting it out, even without them commenting on it, just the, just the act of putting it out, like, helped me mm -hmm. get in the habit of putting things out. Mm -hmm. So... I would say if you could find that community, whatever it is, and just start yeah. sharing with those people first, it's a good first step. Yeah. I, yeah. I would also say I, I really loathe the whole fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's dumb as hell. It works, though. No, because <laughs> you're fake. You're pretending the whole time. The pretending and then, works. No, but the pretending sure, works. It works because it'll get you to the thing. And then when you get there, you're still like shitting yourself because you're like, well, I've been pretending this whole time. That's so what I, happened like, to me. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think it's as, as advisable as just sort of like just allow yourself mm -hmm. to figure yourself out as you go. Like you're never like you if you're just like okay, my goal next what do what do you what do you do for a living? Communication strategy. Okay. Yeah. So what's so what, like what's a, a goal for you? Grad school. <laughs> Okay, grad school, great. So if you're like, okay, I want to get into grad mm -hmm. school, like just be like, I don't know exactly how it's gonna happen, but every day I'm just gonna put like one foot forward towards that goal and like be present for that and just be fully intrinsically myself for that. You'll end up where you're going. I just think the whole faking is you're, you're just pretending and you're not trusting yourself. So then when you get to the thing that you want, 
you have so much self doubt because you have not practiced. It's literally what so, happened to me. <laughs> what? No, like you're so, literally you're triggering me so hard right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like so hard. No, but I just think I just think a lot of people would be happier if they just sort of were like, I'm just gonna be myself yeah. as I figure it out, yeah. and it's all gonna be okay. It's going to be okay. Thank you so much. For yeah. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. the yeah. question. Really Do we have time for two two more questions? Okay. okay. So I didn't mean to trigger you. Do you want me to leave? No, no, no. It's just, it's really, no, what you said was really hitting me because here I was, I was imitating this powerful guy who, who was faking it, totally fake. He was faking it. Yeah. And I was faking being him, this clueless boss guy. And I got all this stuff and I ended up on a set where I was number one on the call sheet and I was in charge and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah, that's not great. And that's exactly what happened. That's yeah. exactly what happened. And you got through it and you wouldn't do it again because now you know better and you know yourself so much. Yeah. That'll be great. Can we edit this part out? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, you're the best. Okay, we have time for two more questions. So make your way to the... To the are you okay, David? <laughs> Make your way to the the microphone if you, yeah. Yes, okay, okay. He's giving me poetry, professor. What's up? Uh, can I read? I'd like to read a few of my. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was like these uh, men tonight. Yeah, I know. these men. Okay, what's no, your name? My name is David. Also, hi, David. Uh, hi, how are you? I wanted to ask you about this concept of work-life balance. And do you think that's even a real thing? Or do they blend together for you in some sense? I feel like for me, um, work has always, I've always aspired to make my whole life my work. I guess that's the Jamaican in me. <laughs> um, I just, I love meeting people through my passions and what I'm excited about. And so when I was working at Google, I was very much like, well, this is a job and I don't really want to be here. So I have to like put this in a box and, um, but, in this new world where I'm doing what I love. I can't, I can't stop doing it. I'm thinking about it all the time. Um, it's amazing, but it's also like you put your heart into something and then you sell it for $26.99. It's just like, it's really, it's, it's, and it's, it's crushing. It's some, you know, it's, it can be very, we need to edit this part out too. Um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I love making my whole life my work, but I, it doesn't work for everybody, you know? And I think that it, there's also something beautiful about having a job and making money from that and then having the thing that you love be the rest of your life as well. So mm -hmm. that's how I feel about it. And you're nodding, so I said the right thing. You did. <laughs> no, I was, I was thinking uh, in terms of the, like this book seeming like a turning point where you're sort of reevaluating things and whether you had considered, whether you were missing out on something because of this really, because uh, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of work, work, work and not much life sometimes, and I wonder what I'm missing. What's your but work? But I love my work. What's your work? Uh, I don't write poems. I'm a musician, so Oh, I that's cute. I love that. Yeah. But, yeah. She loves musicians. You do. Um, <laughs> so, maybe. And I'm single all the time. Yeah, I just feel like if it feeds you, if it makes you feel expansive, keep doing it. I don't know why you would stop. Yeah. Yeah. Great. We agree. Thanks. <laughs> Yay! He just wanted to be reaffirmed in his beliefs. Yeah, he just that was, was like, and now he's gonna go write some music. Yeah. He's literally <laughs> walking out the door. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm done with this. Picking up his guitar. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Kate. Hi, Kate. Hi. Um, so I'll end it with maybe and hopefully an easy one. Um, as a lip synker, what do we have to do to get you a guest spot on RuPaul's Drag Race? And who would you lip sync against? Ooh. Okay, so <laughs> I am such a fan of that. Sh just kidding. I've never seen a single episode. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. So you should watch the early years. Okay. Early years are great. Start okay. with season four or five. Start with season four or five. Okay. I mean, yeah. I could crush anybody, so I will take on literally anybody. Right. Um, I, I want to see you go against Detox. Oh, okay. Oh, that that's a good one. Scary. Okay. <laughs> or, or, yeah. or Coco Montrese. I mean, yeah. Coco Just is go it. straight to Vegas where yes. she's on RuPaul's Drag Race Live yeah. and just do it there. I would be, ama <laughs> I I would be amazing. I would not, can I lip sync RuPaul? Uh, mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, I don't uh, know how the no. show works, so. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm going to say RuPaul streaming. probably would not say yes to that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we I love think, her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's earned it. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for their wonderful questions.
stick around because Sarah's going to be right here signing books for ya. But before you do that, rush the register and go buy the book. Wait, can we get like a, a, a quick like little selfie? Yes, let's do it. Let's get a very excited, oh, yeah. happy selfie. Do we want to do, we should put our mics down. Oh, yeah. 